Hi everyone, I'm Sean from Fnatic Wheel Fansite and this is my review of Fnatic's latest Forza Motorsport CSR Elite Wheel. The Elite definitely doesn't try to hide its Forza Motorsport branding and has a nice big Forza Motorsport badge right in the center of the newly designed rim, which measures about 30 cm in diameter uh, and is very similar to the one used on the CSR wheel, but uh, Fnatic decided to make two changes to make this one look and feel better. The first one is rubberized finish all the way around. And the second one is carbon fiber layer on top of the aluminum center plate, which I think doesn't provide any additional strength or anything like that, but is there only to make uh, the wheel look better. Ergonomically, the rim is very good, I think. Uh, thickness is about the same as uh, that of the rim, uh, rim of uh, Porsche wheels but uh, they didn't use Alcantara all the way around and instead they just used it uh, on uh, 3 o'clock and uh, 9 o'clock positions which is where you will find yourself holding the wheel most of the time uh, and the, the, these Alcantara inserts uh, do a really good job because um, they are soft and also because Alcantara is fabric it breathes so uh, your hands will not sweat as they would if you were holding rubber all the time. This uh, rubberized finish is not, I, I say it's rubberized but I don't think it's rubber, it's just uh, something, uh, it's a thin layer of something in between rubber and plastic but it does its job uh, well, it, it gives you good enough grip while not being sticky uh, like rubber on some wheels is and uh, it is quite scratch resistant. I didn't try to scratch it on purpose but I've been using it for more than a month now and I can't find any scratches on it. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 buttons and a 4-way d-pad on the front of the rim. Um, there's also a tuning menu button here that opens up a menu on this LCD display and the connect button that allows you to pair the wheel with your Xbox for the very first time. You also have left and right pedal shifters, uh, an Xbox guide button on the base and a simple on off switch here that allows you to turn the wheel on and off without touching your cables. Buttons are very different from those on an Xbox gamepad but I don't mean that in a bad way because they are really good. The difference is just that they have less travel uh, and they have a pronounced but silent click. Uh, buttons on, on Xbox Gamepad don't have any sort of click to them. But they are very good, uh, feel very solid and I don't think they could have made them any better. You could complain that they are not integrated into the rim as well as they were on Fnatic's Porsche wheels, but I don't think that is a con really. They are a bit further away from your thumbs as they were before but if you extend your thumbs you can easily reach all of them without releasing the rim um, and I've discovered that because they are so nicely laid out and colorful <laughs> I can actually remember uh, what I assigned to uh, each button much better than I could before. I had uh, some trouble with, the, with this uh, with the Porsche wheel because all the buttons look the same. Also because they are a bit further away from uh, your hands it is almost it is practically impossible to push a button by mistake while racing. This joystick which is actually a d-pad is a different story and in my opinion does not stand up to the quality of buttons. It is a practical solution for navigating both in-game and on-the-wheel menus, but unfortunately it does not feel as solid as the buttons do. Uh, as you can see, it is a bit loose around center and sometimes it requires a bit more precision to register movement than I would like. This wheel is Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC compatible, but 
since it is an Xbox 360 licensed product and a Forza Motorsport branded wheel, you can't really expect anything else but uh, Xbox labeled buttons on the front. Um, unlike buttons on the GT2 wheel which were illuminated so that um, Xbox labels could light up in, in Xbox mode and PlayStation labels on the buttons would light up in the PlayStation mode. Um, here labels are just printed on the buttons and they stay like this but of course you can use uh, them in any mode you just need to check the manual to see which button uh, is which under PlayStation mode. I think the rim looks great and while carbon fiber does not serve any special purpose it does succeed at giving the whole wheel a premium look together with the black matte finish of the rim. However there is something I don't like about the rim and that is the strength of it. Um, it is very strong at uh, the positions where you usually hold it and anywhere below that because uh, this center plate uh, made out of aluminum connects directly to it uh, at these positions but the top part isn't uh, as solid as you'd expect and does allow a tiny bit of flex uh, if you apply force to it. Uh, you don't really notice this while driving but uh, it is a bit of a problem because <laughs> it is a, an expensive wheel and you would expect, expect this rim not to have any flex and to be absolutely rigid and it isn't. Um, I don't think this would be a problem or even noticeable uh, on a cheaper wheel with a plastic base but because this wheel has such, an, such uh, a rigid metal base any flex present anywhere uh, on the rim is noticeable. Behind the wheel there are two big metal pedal shifters that move together with the wheel and are seriously good. They do not only blow away previous Fanatec's pedal shifters but are also considerably better than the solution Logitech used on G25 and G27 wheels which I liked a lot. As you can see they have quite a lot of travel and shifting happens about two-thirds of the way. Um, you do not feel the transition too much but the little haptic feedback you get combined with the audible click they make is lovely and shifting is pure joy. Also it is nearly impossible to miss a shift because uh, shifting is exactly the same no matter where you pull it and uh, because of the position of shifting point uh, it is practically impossible to double shift by accident. The whole rim can be easily replaced by unscrewing just two screws, but unfortunately no other rims are available right now and it is not possible to attach aftermarket rims without some serious modding. The base is what makes this wheel special. It is a completely new design that Fnatic made to jump to the next level and is very similar to the base they will use for the upcoming Clubsport wheel. It brings many new interesting features and all of them put together make this wheel feel and behave incredibly well. First new feature is the full metal construction. Thanks to it the base is absolutely rigid and all the ball bearings make the steering axis very smooth with no slack whatsoever. Second new feature is the positioning of wheel sensor which is now reading wheels angle directly from the cold wheel mounted to the steering axis. The cold wheel is this transparent circle with black stripes and as these black stripes pass the sensor which is uh, below the steering axis uh, it reads the pattern and knows where uh, and how much uh, the rim has moved. Like previous Fnatic wheels it uses an optical sensor that delivers 14 bits of resolution but the end result is better. Uh, if you look at uh, GT3 RS's base for example, you will see that here sensor is mounted directly to the force feedback motor, uh, meaning it cannot measure wheel's position as precisely because all the cogs and belts between the code wheel and the actual steering axis have some slack and flex. That theoretically delivers, delivers lower precision as well as a bit of delay. This is the first wheel that I know of with such sensor position but I'm not familiar with design of wheels costing thousands of dollars. Third new feature are the belts. Previous Fanatics were known for their smooth belt driven force feedback but this time they took it to the next level. 
To make force feedback absolutely smooth, they decided to throw away tooth belts and went forward with two smooth belts with uh, lengthwise grooves instead. Due to the position of the sensor, they could not afford to do this before, but now they can. Smooth belts can slip a bit in extreme conditions, and while this is not perceivable by the player, even the smallest amount of slippage would offset the wheel's center uh, if the sensor was mounted to the motor. With sensor being mounted directly to the axis, it is completely independent from the force feedback mechanism, so even if the belt did slip, wheel's position would continue to be read properly. Fourth new feature are dual force feedback motors instead of one. One is here, the other one is underneath it, and this narrower of two belts runs over both of the motors so that forces get transmitted over this belt to this metal pulley here and from this metal pulley uh, forces go to the wider belt and to the rim so you can feel force feedback effects. Both motors are produced by Mabuchi and are similar to the ones Fnatic used in the past but since there are two now force feedback effects can be much stronger. Also, you will not notice any cogging when you turn the wheel um, and I'm not sure if that's due to the different motor design or how electronics control it, but the difference is very very obvious. Fifth new feature is the cooling system. I never really had any overheating problems with Fanatec's Porsche wheels, but this wheel is fed by a 120 watt power supply and has twice the power so they had to think about the cooling system from the very beginning and came up with a brilliant idea. Wheels housing has two big ventilation grills, one on the left and one on the right, but other than that there are no openings on the housing making it a tunnel. By putting an 80mm fan behind the right ventilation grill that pushes air out, they achieved very good airflow over the motor heatsink and throughout the whole base providing very very good cooling. Because fan is relatively big, it is not too noisy and does not produce any unwanted vibration. You can just hear the air blowing. Sixth new feature is not really a feature, but something I think was very smart to do. I had a look inside the base and discovered that practically all electronics are, are placed on a single big PCB that is here in the back of the base and uh, all the cable connections are soldered directly to it so if we assume that this PCB is well made the possibility of wheel not working is probably lower because there are fewer parts to insert at the assembly line. Here we can also look at the connectors on this wheel starting at the left <laughs> you can also see the labels but I will uh, read them anyway power connector from your power adapter, pedal connector, uh, you can see that uh, this wheel uses different connections than uh, Fnatic did before, it is this uh, RJ type connector similar to, or, yeah, similar to what is used in phone lines, uh, shifter port exactly the same, USB connector uh, you might you, you can see that this one is badly damaged uh, don't worry it doesn't come this way but uh, I had a little bit of an accident the other day I tripped over the USB cord uh, so it got bent but fortunately it works fine and last but not least audio port uh, this is where you connect your Xbox 360 headset to enough with features how well does this wheel really perform? Brilliantly would be the word to describe it. Usually when you get a new wheel it first feels all weird and you really need some time to get used to the new feeling. With CSR Elite I felt right at home very very quickly and I think that's because it just feels right. One of the first things you notice when you try it is how good and mechanical feeling centering and counter steering forces are. Uh, very different from Porsche wheels. Also, it counter steers very quickly, making it a way better drifting wheel than Porsche wheels ever were, so much that I feel, feel like drift mode, which can be enabled in wheels menu, has become obsolete. 
Will is very light and fast, but at the same time very strong. Surprisingly, even though it can be very strong, I never felt like I needed to fight the wheel to stay on the road. It always allowed me to notice loss of grip immediately and react quickly. I felt like I saved the car in some areas where I usually wouldn't. Thanks to smooth belts, rotation is buttery smooth, wheel always feels like it is actually connected to something and force feedback effects are delivered extremely well. Overall, force feedback is very informative and wonderfully textured because you can not only differentiate force feedback effects by their strength, but also by their sharpness like never before. If you check out my benchmarks of the CSR lead that I posted a while ago on Fanatic Wheel fan site, uh, you, you will also find the link in the description box below, you can see that this wheel can accelerate from a standstill faster than pretty much every other wheel out there and, by, and I believe this, together with its solid belt drive, is a reason for a big variety of effects it can deliver. Even the weakest rumble effects can be either sharp or dull. Another thing I would like to mention is that while it has a lot of strength and speed to deliver very sharp effects, it again gives, us, uh, gives out such a command, uh, these effects never end up feeling unnatural like they tend to on gear driven wheels, so we could say it brings together the best of both worlds. I have been using it with many different games on all platforms and it performed great across everything I threw at it, making every single game a better experience than it was before. To my surprise, it worked surprisingly well on consoles, so much that I never felt like I'm missing something when I was driving on Xbox or PlayStation 3. Forza Motorsport 4 is simply amazing and driving around Nordschleife in Gran Turismo 5 is as involving as ever. Of course, I also tried every single simulation possible on PC, including R-Factor, Netcar Pro, iRacing, Live for Speed, Richard Burns Rally and so on, and was always left amazed. As all fanatics, this wheel allows you to adjust force feedback in fine detail directly on the wheel, if you want to. Uh, but I'm one of those who tend to leave it at default settings most of the time, because I think it works well that way. There is one new feature in the firmware though. They added so-called auto clutch function, which will automatically engage the clutch for you when you pull the shifter pedal, um, taking away any advantage gamepad players have because for them clutch is just a button that can be pressed and released very quickly. Of course this is only an option and can be enabled or disabled. You probably noticed that I never mentioned this wheel's table clamping mechanism. That is because it does not have it. Fnatic predicted that most of the people buying such a high-end wheel will have either a wheel stand or a cockpit to mount it on. Uh, so they decided to ship it without it. It only comes with an angle adapter that is screwed on the bottom of the wheel, giving it a natural angle if you decide to mount it on a horizontal surface. Um, of course, it can be removed if needed. If you want to mount it to a table without drilling holes in it, you will need to buy a club sport table clamp, which will also hold your shifter and does its job very well. But it will cost you 50 US dollars or euros extra. To conclude, I will say what I like and what I dislike about the wheel. Let's start with negatives. I already mentioned that the top of the rim is not as strong as it should be and does bend if you apply force to it. It is a, it is a bit of a disappointment considering how much the wheel costs and how strong the base is. I also do not like the joystick. It does not feel as high quality as the other parts and sometimes does not register input if you do not push it very precisely, which is annoying. The last con is absence of table mounting mechanism. I completely understand the argument that most buyers will not need it, but all other cheaper wheels do come with it as standard and here you need to buy it as an accessory. And here's what I liked about it. It is built very well, every material on it feels good and it is not even worth losing time to describe the quality of the base. It CNC aluminum and gives the impression of very high durability. Rim is very comfortable, buttons on it are great and pedal shifters are just awesome. Force feedback is amazing. This wheel really comes close to the real car feel and there is absolutely no way it will not impress you. Wheel can get very light or very hard and force feedback is very rich and also remains very silent at all times. I also liked its firmware upgradeability. 
I'm not sure about uh, how many new firmware updates we'll see in the future, but I'm one of the community testers who have been receiving continuous beta firmware updates since we received these wheels in November, and I can tell you that the difference they made is night and day. It is good to know that the wheel can be um, further improved by just upgrading firmware. It has a great and relatively silent cooling system. The last positive point I would like to mention is the rim exchangeability. We don't know when more rims will become available, but it's good to know that we will get at least the GT and the Formula style rim to put on here. All in all, this wheel is just awesome. It is expensive, but you certainly get what you paid for. Unfortunately, I could not compare it to Thrustmaster's T500 RS uh, because I don't have it. Uh, but I switched it a lot with Fanatec's Porsche and Logitech G25 wheels and it is so much better that it quickly becomes clear this wheel is in a completely different league. Uh, which it absolutely should be considering it's 500 plus US dollars or Euro price tag.